Okay, very quickly, we'll start with the, what's been happening today. And obviously, the big, uh, the, the big news has been, well, the, the three actually main uh, main events. First, there's been the OPEC meeting, which I don't know whether there's been any kind of agreement yet. I've got my Twitter feed up here at the moment, uh, whether they've agreed to a cut uh, to try and support the uh, the oil price. That obviously has an impact on on the Canadian dollar. So that's been ongoing. There's been this in this group uh, this meeting today, which is the Eurogroup uh, meeting. And this is to try and have a coordinated response to what is happening in the Eurozone, as I said, to the coronavirus uh, 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 crisis. And I don't think they've come to an agreement yet, although somebody was saying that uh, they had they had agreed to some kind of um, uh, economic package, as it were, for um, places like Italy, Spain and uh, the, the harder hit countries. But that hasn't come through. The other, of course, is the unemployment claims we have from Canada and from the United States. And these are the numbers for the United States, as you can see here, completely off the chart. I think it's since the last couple of weeks, it's now 10 million. So that is the extent of uh, the, the, the carnage that is going on in, uh, in, the, in the economies all over the world. And also we have had um, the same for Canada. Let's see what they are. That's I think it's just reported in a slightly different way uh, in Canada. And the employment rating, unemployment rate in Canada is now at 7.8. We haven't got an unemployment rate for the um, uh, for the United States. The response from the Fed has just been just basically, I'm um, just, you know, you go from the sublime to the ridiculous. And again, this is from my Twitter feed, and I just play you this. You probably can't hear it. I think it's the, the uh, theme tune from, um, uh, from Pulp Fiction. And that's what basically has they, they are just, they're just throwing everything at it uh, to kind of cushion uh, the, the fallout from what uh, may, you know, it's going to happen when this uh, when this uh, is contained, is mitigated, comes under control. Nothing is really going to happen in terms of resolution. I'm sure you know until we get some kind of vaccine or some kind of testing program that tells us who has it, who has had it, who who hasn't. Now, very very quickly, can I just make a suggestion? This is Nouriel Roubini. You may have heard of him. Do AKA Dr. Doom. Well, he was certainly right this time. And I think uh, the other one is uh, what's his name? The guy who wrote uh, the Black Swan. Was it Talib? He's uh, he was always uh, so they are they're probably the two leading um, uh, you know forecasters of this uh, you know what the what the you know what could happen if this situation uh, uh, um, ever came about. What I suggest is the, the, the he started this new site called NurielToday.com, and um, forget this about pre-purchase one, but he actually did a broadcast on the first of April. Uh, which is a few days ago. Oh, I can't find that. Uh, this is having all sorts of uh, all sorts of problems here, but it is still available, and it's about a, a 45 minute presentation. And basically, he talks he talks uh, through uh, what has happened, where we are, and where he thinks things are going. And he basically has two options. There are two options. There are two routes. This is going to go. We're either going to have a very very deep what he calls a greater recession, or we're going to have a, de a, a depression. And that is basically it. And we won't know that until everything around the pandemic is more or less um, under some kind of control and things can return to some kind of normality. But if you're interested in, it is somewhere um, on the 1st of April. I did manage to to, uh, to see it. I think this one on the 8th, I think he charges like $10. So it's 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 peanuts. But if you want to listen to, uh, to Rubini explaining, then head over to his site. Right. What else I going to talk about? Yes. VPA, volume price analysis. Integrated into volume price analysis is our Wyckoff's three laws, the law of supply and demand, cause and effect, and effort B results. But VPA is a price, volume, candles, candle patterns, and time. And as part of the time, we talk about multiple time frames. In our session on Tuesday, what I started to talk about and something I'm going to develop in the uh, webinars to come is using multiple time frames and how what is happening in a slower time frame is going to, to some extent, dictate the kind of price action that you are 
you are likely to encounter in a faster time frame. And also, support and resistance is a huge, huge part of volume price analysis and technical analysis and trading generally. How you determine that support and resistance, whether it's price-based or volume-based, we happen to have both here. Um, how you incorporate that and we also have something called the Camarilla levels which those of you who have the um, the quantum package will will know about anyway and there's a question down some says well you know what do I mean by that and the best way I can explain it is to actually illustrate it and I have here the chart of the Aussie dollar and I've also got the pound New Zealand on uh, my other platform but it really doesn't matter because this is applicable to whatever you are trading now if we look at the let's look at the daily chart and probably the daily chart is as good as any to take what we're looking at the, what are we seeing on the daily chart what we're seeing on the daily chart for the Aussie dollar could be anything is in fact we have seen a break this is this uh, this instrument is now in a a discernible trend it's had you know three nice up candles forget the, let's forget the vpa element of at the moment just look at it look at it from the uh, perspective of price so we can see here this is in a an uptrend it is in some kind of trend it's not in congestion it is in come subject what is that going to tell you what is likely to what kind of price action you are likely to get in the faster time frames and the best way i can illustrate that is with the um uh, the renko what that basically tells us is because it is in a defined trend, it is not whipsawing, it is not choppy. When you are looking to take a trend in a faster time frame, you are going to get corrections, you are going to get pullbacks, but that trend is likely to be maintained. So where VPA will come in, volume price analysis come in, comes in, is when you do get a correction or you do get a pullback, from that primary trend so if let's say the primary trend for the aussie dollar at the moment is move it's up it's going it's going higher in the faster time frames you will get pullbacks you will get corrections and what vpa will do is will tell you whether confirm that they are just a secondary or minor trend before the primary trend is then re-established now you as a trader who are in the in the uh, faster time frames by using the faster uh, charts and a non-time based chart such as the uh, such as a Renko that we have here you will then have to wait until that secondary trend that minor trend that pullback is confirmed with with VPA then it moves back up and that's when your support and resistance comes in that's when your support and so when price breaks through a significant uh, uh, resistance because we're going higher here then you could be looking to take a trend to the upside now, and we've got a really nice e example here this is these are the pullbacks then it tried to move higher it doesn't mean it always go in a straight line and yes that could have been a uh, that would be a, a trade that possibly you might have had to taken a, a few pips out possibly not because the way you use the uh, the indicators on the Renko is you look at the trend dots and you look at the trend monitor and when you get this match between the two that is a potential entry you look at your, your support and resistance that is the resistance across here that you can see on the uh, and we know this is likely to be moving higher so on this pullback and by the way some of the corrections and some of the the pullbacks that you have in the faster time frames if you're trading very very fast david has the seconds charts up are they tradable sure for sure because you may be only looking for a few pips but if you go back to let's take sort of minute charts not the very very fast charts once you get this uh, these pullbacks and you get this little bit of congestion you can see here there's a little bit of congestion there which is also shown on the on the time charts once once the trend is it starts to go it will go now we're seeing here a little bit more of congestion but can you see that has been minor little pullbacks minor little pullbacks this has stayed uh, bright blue that has transitioned to a dark red but not a bright red all the trend dots apart from these little red ones here but there hasn't been a match it looks like this wants to go higher and then you use your uh, your time-based charts for some kind of idea of where this is going to go so this is the aussie dollar is is a nice when it's in this type of price action it also the risk is less on the trade because you're not going to be whipsawed that you, something might happen and suddenly reverse it that's fine. I mean, you know, in trading, nothing is certain. 
But when you have a slower time frame that looks like this on a daily chart, your life down at the faster end, end of the, uh, the spectrum is that much, a little bit easier. By contrast, if we look at the pound New Zealand, and I want to look at the daily chart again, if you look at this daily chart and you think, right, first of all, you have these two enormous volatility candles. You've got one here and you've got one here. And in general, this is, although you've got a, a discernible, you know, trends within the congestion, I'm not, I'm not denying that, in the main, this is within a, a, a congestion. And we know there's also a lot of whipsawing here. And how do we know that? Because of uh, wicks to the tops and bottoms of the candles there, 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 there. Um, slightly not such a wide range there, but a lot of whipsawing going in there. That's not too bad. Uh, that one, and then today, it's pound uh, New has not been too bad. But when the slower time frame charts looks like this, what does that tell you? It tells you that in the faster time frames, you're going to get a lot of choppy price action, and you're possibly going to get um, sometimes what's called good two-way price action. I mean, you take a you take a candle like this, the range of that candle. You know, there's there would have been there would have been trading opportunities to the going to long and going to short, but because it's whipsawing, because it's probably moving a lot faster than something that is going up uh, uh, to the long side, and when markets go up, they always tend to go up much slower than when they're falling or when they're whipsawing around. You are going to be taking on more more risk, and if you are going to be in a trade, you're going to not going to be in there for very long. So that's how you tell the kind of trading uh, um, experience that you are going to have in the faster timeframes by looking at the slower timeframes. And yes, support and resistance will be absolutely crucial to whatever time frame that you use. Right, bit of a long explanation about that, but I hope that that clears that. And then what I'm gonna do next time is really just look at it more, just not go over the explanation again, but just say, right, this is what's in the faster time frame on the slow time frame, this is what we're looking at. This is my expectation. This is what my Renko is taking me, uh, uh, telling me. And in fact, the Aussie dollar that I have here, this is the Renko version. This is on uh, Ninja 8. And we can see this, um, uh, this big, big consolidation phase. And in the consolidation, areas of resistance are being, uh, uh, are being um, uh, created because the price keeps touching it. The pivots are fantastic. They are demarcating the uh, uh, the, um, uh, uh, the 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 uh, the congestion area. The good news is this is the camera. This is it's actually broken through the R4, which is a significant level. That's what we want if it's going to get going to go higher. And where is it going to go to? Well, the R5 is 0634. Let's have a look. 34. Uh, Three thirty four hundred. Yeah. So this, you know, all things being equal, but we're coming to the end of the trading session. We're coming towards a holiday. If this was like ten o'clock in the morning, you think, yeah, great. You know, there's going to be a chance that he's going to get there. It might still get there. All depends what happens in the uh, uh, in the other markets because the Aussie is obviously a sentiment uh, uh, currency and uh, obviously an important commodity currency. So that's it. This is, uh, that's all I want to say on that. I'm just going to pass over to David. If you've got any questions on that, just, um, yeah, what do you want?